Hey guys, welcome back to theclinicaltrialsguru.com again. It's theclinicaltrialsguru.com. You can email me dan at theclinicaltrialsguru.com. You send in your questions, I will give you my answers, keep you anonymous. It's about as simple as that sounds. That's how simple it actually is. Okay, so today's video, I don't know if it's going to be short or long. A lot of it's really going to depend on my mood. When I get these questions, I don't really prepare an answer until I turn the camera on and pretty much read the question. So sometimes I don't actually have a very lengthy answer, and sometimes I do, and sometimes I go off on tangents, and I start talking about things related, or sometimes completely unrelated to the question, but that's kind of what makes this show fun and interesting, and I think people like that better than just having scripted dialogue and scripted um, interviews. So that's one thing I also don't do for anyone who I interview on this show. I tell them, I, I can give them an idea of what kind of questions I'm going to ask, but I can't give them a script because I don't have a script. I just go with the flow. So the first question is, Dan, I'm a CRA and I've been a CRA for several years and I'd like to start my own CRO. How do I go about doing that? So what I can tell you, number one, first of all, is good luck. Uh, it's a huge aspiration. Um, that doesn't mean you can't do it. It's just, it's a process. Okay? It doesn't happen overnight. Uh, what I suggest, many people are actually in this situation. CRAs, they either want to start their own clinics or the really, really, really ambitious ones want to start their own CROs. And there's clinics out there uh, that actually make and are much more profitable, make more money and are much more profitable than some CROs. So don't just say you want to become a CRO because you think it's more money there because, like I said, there's tons of clinics out there that are run very efficiently, that are very profitable, and that make tons of money and have complete market share domination in their markets. And I said markets plural because usually they are in more than one geographic location. So anyways, with that being said, I have a CRO as well as sites. Actually, the two are somewhat integrated in the strategy. Um, the, the research sites can actually give business to the CRO and vice versa. So there is a huge advantage in <clears throat> being able to control both. But for those of you who are brand new and just getting started, like this person. Uh, what I recommend you do, I know you want to become a CRO, become a research site first, even if it's a small site. Okay, get a couple studies, find a niche. You really don't want to just say you're a CRO and start pitching sponsors for any kind of therapeutic indication. Become a site first, get some studies in whatever niche you want. So if it's cardiology, if it's diabetes, if it's women's health studies, if it's phase one, Find something that works for you, that you like, that you want to do. Find a therapeutic area and focus, focus, focus on that until you become an expert in that. And that's really what sponsors pay CROs for. Is Yeah, they, they pay them to find the sites, to manage the trials, but they're also paying them for their expertise. If I'm a sponsor and I'm conducting a trial for Huntington's disease, I want to make sure that the CRO that I'm choosing knows what they're doing when it comes to this therapeutic indication. I want to make sure that they know which investigators are good, which investigators can recruit patients. Um, I, I want to know what some of the hurdles and some of the obstacles might be when it comes to adverse events. Uh, you want a CRO that's experienced. So that's my suggestion for you is to get very, very hyper-focused on one particular therapeutic indication as a site. Do that for a year. Make some money. There's nothing wrong with making money. Okay? And then you can either transition that site into a CRO or let it run, especially if it's profitable. Why would you stop a good thing? Why would you kill a golden goose that's laying golden eggs for you? Um, you can let that run and use the profits to fund your CRO. 
that you're going to start. So you can either transition your site into a CRO, which is riskier, or you can let your site run on its own, maybe find someone to manage it, and just you continue giving studies to the site, and then use the profits to build up your CRO business. That's what I would do, that's what I have done, that's what I'll continue to do. This is a repeating cycle. It, I see the same patterns happening over and over and over and over again in different therapeutic indications. So look at most CROs, they, most of them pretty much started like this unless they were started by a group of venture capitalists and former CRO people from other organizations or former sponsor uh, individuals who already had connections in their therapeutic indication. So if you look at a lot of the CROs, they're getting very specialized. So there's the big ones, there's Quintiles, there's INC Research, there's Covance, but there's a lot of small to mid-sized CROs that are just doing a particular indication and sponsors are oftentimes bypassing the big CROs to go with the smaller ones, not just because it costs them less, but because they're more knowledgeable and more experienced in what in the type of trials that they do. So hopefully that helps. That is how to start a CRO. Uh, I think I had another question. It says, how often do you feel that uh, your research staff should do GCP training? Uh, would you consider 2010 training outdated? Yes, I do. Um, it's every year. So once a year, GCP training. That's a pretty easy one. Uh, there was another one. It says, hey Dan, what do you do when sponsors refuse to pay? We made attempts back in 2013 uh, to get a payment that is still owed to us. It's now 2015. Uh, at the time of this video, it's January 22nd, 2015. So that's obviously a long time. I think there's some issues here with the actual sponsor uh, being a biotech and not being well funded. Look, if the amount is greater than $5,000, this is not a small business uh, court case anymore. This is something that you will win if you have a contract and I've never heard of a research site doing a clinical trial without a contract. So you will win. Find an attorney. They're probably going to want to get a good chunk of your earnings, but they will get it. Okay. Even if the group is bankrupt, there are ways for these attorneys to recoup your funds. So contact any good attorney that specializes in contracts and uh, business litigation, commercial litigation, and uh, attack. Uh, I personally have never had this happen to me. I've had studies where payments were way late like we're talking about we're supposed to get monthly payments and instead we're getting quarterly payments or sometimes uh, one payment every six months so that took a couple of phone calls for me and a few other people to get that back on track and actually what we found out was it wasn't just something as simple as the sponsor not wanting to pay us it was the fact that they had some issues in their internal communication chains between their monitors how they were reviewing the data in the EDC and then how they reported that to their superiors and then how those superiors reported it to the payments department. So you got to remember, we were talking about CROs. A lot of these sponsors and CROs, they're huge organizations. They've got so many people. Internal communication is often a problem. They're, the payments are usually late, not because they want to piss you off, although ultimately that's what happens, but it's because of this internal communication like uh, this long chain that kind of drags drags on forever and uh, so many things have to happen before a payment gets triggered and I think sponsors are starting to streamline that especially now remember we talk about supply and demand all the time on the show <clears throat> we were in a period where there was very low study supply but a lot of demand a lot of research site a lot of research sites out there that wanted to get these studies now in January, January 22nd, 2015, what we're seeing is a gradual increase in the supply of studies. And what that will mean is the sponsors are going to have to do more things to 
benefit the sites that the sites will like, like paying on time, like, uh, I don't know, having reasonable um, inclusion-exclusion criteria, having reasonable demands for what a principal investigator needs to do to get the study or what they need to have. So it's all supply and demand, it's all business, it's all economics. Yes, we're in an industry where we're trying to find better treatments and, and cures, although some would argue that Big Pharma is not really trying to find cures, but that's a topic for a whole other show. But at the end of the day, it's a business, and this blog is aimed at you business owners out there, whether you're someone running a research site, a CRO, an IRB, an SMO, uh, or just a vendor in the clinical research space, maybe a patient recruitment firm, whatever it is, this, this blog and these videos are for you guys. So hopefully this mini video helps, and let me know, keep your questions coming in, dan at theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Dan at theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Until next time, follow up, follow up, follow up, and take care.